This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's time to talk about everyone's favorite topic of conversation, college. It's something that everybody has an opinion on and I'm going to subject you to some of mine today. For a lot of seniors out there and people who are applying to undergraduate programs, it's January, so you must have just like completed that whole application process. Are you doing well? Are you okay? As someone who has gone through the application process myself, I know that it is soul crushing, soul wrenching. Uh, I hope you are doing well, truly. <laughs> One of my pet peeves when I'm watching a TV show or a movie where characters, the main character usually is applying to colleges, uh, they usually pick really prestigious ones, Ivy Leagues like Princeton, Yale, Harvard, throw in Stanford sometimes. And granted, like, these are TV shows, these are characters that are living exceptional lives and naturally if they're living exceptional lives, exceptional people, they're going to get accepted into exceptional colleges. They, these are TV shows, they are not real. So you know, at the end of the day, if every single character usually ends up getting accepted to this prestigious college, that shouldn't really be that big of a deal. It's a work of fiction. Yeah, that's fine. However, if these shows, movies are catering towards a younger audience, it really is setting up a precedent that getting into these schools is more attainable than it really is. And not only that, if you are going to show, you know, someone getting accepted into this prestigious college, I would appreciate it if you would show the true struggle behind getting into this college. Because a lot of times in a TV show, you know, it's just kind of thrown in there to wrap up a series sometimes if, you know, you see these characters going through high school. Characters are like, oh yeah, sure, like, let me just apply to Stanford. Oh, yay, I got in. You know, I'm a good student. I get good grades. Why not? I'll tell you why not. Getting into an Ivy League college is extremely difficult. And that kind of goes without saying, but I think if you haven't like gone through the application process recently, you don't really know until you're in the thick of it. The biggest culprit of the, you know, portrayal of characters getting into Ivy League colleges left and right, I would say is Disney Channel. And you may be like, Amanda, this portrayal is kind of a thing of the past. As younger writers are entering the studio, writing the plots, they're not going to, you know, push this narrative as much probably. Well, here's the thing. So, you know, a little while ago, going from like older to newer, we have Topanga from Boy Meets World going to Yale, Bailey from Sweet Life on Deck going to Yale as well, Teddy from Good at Luck Charlie going to Yale, Gabriella from High School Musical going to Stanford, Allie from Austin Alley going to Harvard, and then Mandy from the newest, um, one of the newer Disney Channel original movies, Prom Pact, also getting into Harvard. So as you can see with that latest example, it's still, you know, a trope that's been going on. And if we move outside of Disney Channel, we can also see this as well. In Gilmore Girls, Rory got into Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. In The Kissing Booth, Elle and Noah both got into Harvard, but Elle also got into USC and uh, UC Berkeley. In the To All the Boys series, Peter got into Stanford, and then Lara Jean got rejected from Stanford. But then, oh no, she had to go to NYU? And then in Never Have I Ever, Davy got into Princeton. All these shows have varying portrayals. Some are more realistic than others. But at the end of the day, I'm still seeing tropes where we have characters who nonchalantly kind of get accepted into these really prestigious schools. And then their biggest struggle is either A, oh no, which prestigious school do I choose? And this decision is usually swayed by, oh gosh, golly, which school is closer to my boyfriend slash girlfriend? Or B, oh no, I didn't get accepted into my first choice, which is probably an Ivy League, and now I'm gonna have to settle for going to NYU or UC Berkeley, USC. But because this struggle isn't accurately portrayed in TV shows and movies, I'm going to describe to you my struggle, my journey through the college application process, and give you a little glimpse of what I feel like the majority of people go through during this process. But before we really get into that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. If you're watching this right now, it means you've used a website at least once. Squarespace is a platform that allows you to create your own website. You may be like, Amanda, what on earth do I need a website for? With Squarespace, you can build your brand and grow your business, meaning you can sell anything, physical products, digital products, your time and services. You can start out with a pre-built layout or customize the site with the tons of 
design tools they offer to match your vision. Then you can upload, organize, and access all your content from your asset library. I went with the pre-built layout myself, which was super quick and easy to showcase my extensive photography work. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash amandatodhunter to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video. So again, this is my personal journey. It probably parallels a lot of other, you know, kids' journeys, but things can be different. Step number one, find out about the existence of college. This can happen in a variety of different ways. Maybe your family kind of pushes it upon you. Maybe you learn through friends slash, you know, your school teachers, or you could be exposed to it through media, such as Disney Channel, such as any of these shows. For me personally, my family was the one that exposed me to the idea of going to college and on top of that attending a prestigious college, which brings me to number two, which is get told whether you can actually go to college or not. I feel like either one of two things happens when you're, you know, a child and you don't even know what college is. You don't know any of this shit, but yet you're still being told whether or not this is an option for you several, ten, maybe even 10 plus years into the future. Either A, the expectation that you are going to go to college is thrust upon you. Maybe you come from a family of legacies. Every ancestor has gone to this prestigious college and then you're next in line. Maybe your family is just like, they value education and they value college as a step in the process that will lead you to becoming more educated. Maybe your parents never had the opportunity to go to college for whatever reason, and they want you to have this opportunity that they never had. Or B, maybe from the get-go, you were told this option, this route of going to college isn't even possible for you for whatever reason, whether it be like financial, you know, family, you have jobs that you need to do, you need to work, and you can't afford to go to college. But for me, I, you know, I had this expectation thrust upon me from a young age, which brings me to number three, pick a random elite school. I don't know, I've had a lot of friends who have had this experience as well, but when you're young, for whatever reason, because of your family, because of external pressures, you are told you're going to go to college and then you're like, hey, um, someone asks you, what college do you want to go to when you grow up, sweetie? And you, you're like, okay, which college have I heard of before? Oh. Stanford, sure, I'll I'll aim for Stanford, why not? Gabriella did it, so why can't I? So Stanford was my random elite school that I picked at the age of like seven, which brings me to number four, the grind. So I think this kind of awakening of anxiety and stress happened younger for me than it does most people. In elementary school, I was just chilling. Grades don't matter in elementary school, you're just kind of like, you're just there to vibe. But then in fifth grade, I started feeling this unease because I'm entering middle school, I'm entering sixth grade. We're getting real here. We are getting intense. This is where shit starts to go down. When, let me tell you, if you are <laughs> in middle school, entering middle school, and people are telling you that these grades matter, for your transcript, for your permanent record, that is a complete lie. Colleges do not look at your middle school grades. No one looks at your middle school grades. Maybe I was the only one delusional enough to believe that colleges go back and look sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade at all your grades at every single grade you have received or will receive. That is just not true. Nobody has the time to do that, babe. But anyway, because I was so delusional in sixth grade and because I was told by like the principal of our middle school, maybe I just made this memory up, but I I remember the principal of our middle school saying, hey, you know, kid, kitties. <laughs> From now on, every single grade that you will receive matters and it will end up on your permanent record. And I must have been 10 or 11 when I heard this. And 10 year old Amanda heard that and she thought, oh fuck. So starting from the ripe age of 10 years old, I was anxious, stressed every day about every single grade I received in sixth grade, in seventh grade, in eighth grade. And then eventually we get to ninth grade, which is freshman year, the first year of high school. And by this point, I kind of realized, oh, these grades are actually the ones that matter. The past three years of my life, I was anxious and stressed for absolutely no reason. But that's fine. High school though, high school it does matter. So that's when you really need to step up on the grind because colleges do look at that. Another thing that colleges look at is your extracurriculars. And that's the other thing. Usually in freshman year of high school or maybe at some point in high school, you're thinking about college and you realize, oh, extracurriculars, 
what on earth am I going to put on my application? But colleges, it's so annoying because colleges, you know, at first, I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think at first colleges were like grades, 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 it's all about perfect grades, top of the class, SAT. And then at some point, I don't know if this like changed or not, if this was always this way, they were like, you need extracurriculars, you need a bunch of them. And then everybody started trying to do every single extracurricular under the sun. And then eventually they said, hey, no, it's not about the quantity of extracurriculars you do, it's about the quality. So that means you need to show that you are dedicated to a certain area of your life to show that you have commitment. You know, you need to be doing this extracurricular over the course of years. And now you're in high school and you're thinking, well, fuck. <laughs> when you are actually thinking about applying to college, I got what I'd like to call the application induced reality check. So for me, I had been really, really focusing a lot of my time and energy into having a perfect academic record. I had this like weird notion from, you know, sixth grade that colleges looked at every single grade you get on every assignment, but colleges look at the grade that's on your like report card, you know? Whatever semester system your school has, did you finish that class with an A? And so I, you know, over the course of the past seven years, middle school and high school, through whatever means necessary, I was pushing myself to the limit to ensure that I finished whatever class with an A and then an A would show up on my report card. On top of that, if you really want to go above and beyond, which I didn't because I knew that it would literally kill me, you could also take the most advanced courses that your high school has to offer. This could be in the form of it being called like an honors class, um, taking an AP class. And I think this is pretty universal, but when you take an AP class, it like boosts your GPA. So you can get above a 4.0 because an A in an AP class counts more than four if you get an A. I did a lot of crazy extracurriculars in elementary and middle school, but then I moved. So I was in a different place starting my freshman year in high school. And so I couldn't continue any of the extracurriculars like in the same way as I had been doing in elementary and middle school. So in freshman year of high school, I was kind of fucked. I was like, what do I do? Because colleges, here's the funny thing, colleges really only care about the extracurriculars that you do in high school, which was really great for me. But you know, after all this time I've spent getting the grades, trying my best to do the extracurriculars, it's time for the application process. And they're like, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to major in? I have literally no idea. I have no idea because I have spent the entirety of my childhood catering to what I think the expectation would be for colleges when they look at my application, right? So none of this has been enjoyable for me. Every subject in school has been tainted for me because of the horrible experiences that I have trying to get perfect scores in these classes. So I have no idea what major I want to choose. On top of that, so you have this like random elite college that you picked during your childhood, but you also probably want to apply to other colleges. What other colleges do you want to apply to? I don't really know. And it's so overwhelming when you have all of these options. Do you want to stay in your state? Do you want to expand to, you know, the rest of your country? Do you want to go abroad to a different country? So location is something that is pretty important that should be a factor in your decision. Other factors include the culture of a specific school. Every college has a specific culture. You don't really know what the vibes are unless you visit that college, which costs money <laughs> to visit that college. You also have the size of the college. Do you want it to be a really big school? Do you want it to be a small school? You got that really intimate environment. What do you want? Uh, girl, I don't know what I want. And then we have the hurdle of actually getting into the college, which I think that the TV shows don't really show the weight of that sometimes because it is extremely, extremely daunting. And I remember being so annoyed whenever like my high school teachers, they would see us seniors freaking out about applications and they'd say, hey, no worries. Don't even worry about it. Like, it's not the end of the world. Whatever college you decide, whatever decision that's made, um, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. And I used to be so upset because I'm like, it does matter though. Like my life will look extremely different depending on the choices that I make. Like I may end up at the same job, but the life experience that I will have for those four or so years of my life, it will pre it will vary, you know? Who knows what'll happen? So who are you to say when you applied to college 30, 40 years ago to tell me that it's all gonna be good? It's, do you know what the environment is like today? It, it, it will not be good. And you know what other thing that the shows don't tell you? 
money. The whole experience of applying to college, forget the tuition. We'll come back to tuition later, but the process of applying, it really truly adds up. So I already mentioned you could choose to visit a college that you're interested in, which may cost money, may cost a plane ticket, it may cost gas money, it may, whatever the case may be. It costs money to visit those schools. If you are taking the advanced classes, like AP classes, for example, that can count as college credit, which means you need less units to graduate when you actually are in college because you completed those units in high school. Taking an AP test costs a hundred bucks per exam. So if you're taking three different AP classes in three different subjects, that's three different tests you need to take. That's 300 buckaroos right there. I know the SAT is kind of like not really a necessary thing anymore, but if you want to take that, that's also 50 bucks. And now, hey, you actually want to apply to college? You actually, you know, you want to send in an application? That's 60 to 90 bucks per school. So if you're applying to 10 schools, let's Let's make a conservative estimate. Let's say that to apply to 10 colleges, each application costs 60 bucks. That's 600 buckaroos right there. So let's say you're applying to 10 schools and 10 may sound like a lot, but I mean, honestly, it really truly depends. I know, I feel like 10 is like pretty a pretty common number among people that I've talked to. I applied to 10 personally. There are some people who apply to way more. There are some people who apply to way less. If you apply to 10 schools and you are taking three AP tests, which honestly isn't that many, then you're already at 900 buckaroos, that's almost a thousand dollars, and you're not even in a college yet. And then finally, it's time to, you know, receive your decision. Did you get in? Did you not get in? And this, of course, is the question that every person who applied to college hates because everybody is asking, everybody has an opinion. In my personal experience, if you apply to a college that has like a 30% acceptance rate to a 50% acceptance rate and you're a really good student, you know, you have really good grades, you're at the top of your class, I'd say the chances of you getting accepted into that school are pretty high. However, if you are applying to an Ivy League or a school with a lower acceptance rate than 30%, which is usually the schools that TV shows and movies love to feature, all bets are off. It is literally, you have no way of knowing if you are going to get into these schools. It is truly, you know, I had, like some people got into Harvard, but not UCLA. Like some people got into UCLA, but not UC Berkeley. Like it really, it, it honestly seems almost random. For context into how competitive these schools are, let's pick Harvard, for example. Harvard accepts a thousand applicants, right? There are around 25,000 high schools in the country, in the United States. And you know, every single one of those schools is gonna have a valedictorian. They're gonna have someone at the top of the class. And Harvard only accepts 1,000 people. Ah! So then decisions come out. You may not have gotten into your first choice or you know, you did get into your first choice. That's great. That's amazing. That's an extra, that's such an accomplishment. How the fuck are you going to pay for that? In-state public school tuition is around like, it depends, but for the state that I'm in, it's around like $30,000 for tuition and room and board. Room and board is important because that's, you're, you're gonna have to pay for that regardless. For a private school, it's around 50 to $80,000 per year. Hello? There's a lot of things about the college conversation that I don't like. And you know, I, I didn't really talk about TV shows and movies in this video that much, but I mean, the point that I want to make is I feel like it's a little bit dangerous to put out this narrative of, you know, hey, go to these Ivy League schools. You know, it's the best of the best. Everybody wants to go there. Not necessarily. There's a lot of, there's a really a lot of things to take into consideration when you're deciding whether or not you want to go to college and then which college you want to go to. I think there is something to be said about putting this on children too early. For channels like Disney Channel, really young kids are watching these shows. You know, there's, there's no need to talk about college. I feel like the whole thing almost seems backwards. You work yourself to the bone to get into this college that you may or may not be able to actually pay for. And then you figure out what you want to do while you're in college. But I feel like that's backwards because you're spending tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars when I feel like it would make the most sense to get the most out of your experience to kind of get some life experience, figure out what you want to do, and then pay to get that higher education for something specific. Also, one thing that you really need to consider is what your goals are. 
everybody's goals are different. Everybody's situation is unique. For some fields, getting into an Ivy League college for undergrad is extremely beneficial. Sometimes going to a more prestigious school for grad school is more important. If you want the degree, you can go to a community college and then transfer to a four-year school and save a bunch of money. And when you're making this decision, you're also super young and you have all of these adults who think that they know what's best for you. You are young, so you may make the wrong decision. But you know, at least you made a decision yourself. I, I honestly feel like that could be better than doing what someone else said to you and then regret it. I feel like going to a really prestigious college at the expense of suffering crippling student loans is not worth it. But if you come from a rich family and you can afford to do so, even afford to bribe your way into college to pay that much more money to have your child get that status, to experience what that's like, then by all means go for it, I guess. Moral of the story, I don't think movies and TV shows should idolize these prestigious colleges that much because yeah, you may get in and that's great and all, but at what cost? <laughs> there are tons of options out there. No one choice is better than the other. At the end of the day, you know yourself and your situation best. So listen to your gut. And if you're in middle school, please, please, for the love of God, do not stress about your grades. Listen to like, learn from me. <laughs> I hope you all had a good time watching this. This is just, I, I like talking about college because it's something that gets me fired up. But um, let me know your thoughts. Hope you're having a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.